Hi everyone, in this short video, we are going to see how to add numbers in an array that contains uh, numeric and non-numeric values in Microsoft. So consider this example, we have an array here, it has numbers and letters. So how can we safely skip these letters and add uh, these numbers and also these numbers? And we can do this uh, in two ways. One, we can use for each with on error continuous scope. And with for each, uh, we can process individual elements sequentially one by one. Since we have an array, when we have a collection or, of, uh, or an array, we can take each element and then add it up to uh, some container, like we create a variable with zero value initially, then iterate over each element of the array sequentially and update the value of the variable. So for we use for each scope uh, for that purpose. And in for each, uh, modification is to existing variables, as you can see here, in for each modification is to existing variables, uh, that take place when processing one element are visible during the processing of another element. So since we are processing the data sequentially, before the for each, we can create a variable whose value is zero, then go sequentially one by one over the elements of the payload and add the upgrade the variable, the new value of the variable as a previous value plus the payload. And since this is uh, sequentially, in, in each iteration, each iteration has information about uh, what has happened to the variable in the previous iterations, or it knows it knows the most recent value of the variable, so it can easily update it. And also, the other property of for each scope that makes it comfortable uh, or suitable for such applications is in for each variable is created in the scope are accessible outside of the scope. In, if it is parallel for each, uh, variables that you create inside the scope uh, are not accessible outside of the scope, whereas for, for each, variables created in the scope are accessible outside of the scope. And this, uh, this makes it uh, the right approach to iterate over a collection and add each element to our variable. And when it comes about the uh, on error continuous scope, we can use on error continuous scope uh, in a tri scope. So, in this case, when we use a on error continue with a tri scope, uh, when we try to add a letter to the to the numbers, uh, it will it will raise an error. However, the on error continue inside the tri scope will handle it and uh, it will it will send uh, success. So it will not fail. At the end, it is not raising, it is not failing, it is not sending it, uh, an error. We know on error continue is uh, read in green out. So that means the error is being handled in that tri scope before continuing to the next element. Uh, so it, it is solved, it is handled in the tri scope. And since the output is success, then it continues to the next element of the payload. If we use on error propagate, However, since it will it will send um, an error, then it will not continue to the next part to the next element of the payload. Rather, it is going to just stop there and uh, return an error. So an error on error continue scope. Error continue in this diagram, as you can see, this is on error continue scope, and an error comes here and it gets resolved inside the scope, and at the end, it sends the response is success. The other way we can add the numbers, only the numbers by skipping the letters without our uh, projects returning an error is we can use if else condition. So if, if you are new, if you have never seen how to use if else in Microsoft with data we you can see the tutorial in this data with tutorial, I will add it in the description section. So we can use if else condition with the is numeric function from the strings module. So what we are doing here is if the element of the payload is a number, 
that is is numeric we return true when it is a number and false when it is not so if it is a number then update the value of the variable as previous value uh, plus then the new variable will be the old value plus the uh, the payload so i have a project running in debug mode and we can quickly test both approaches so as you can see i have here the path is this one is add one so initially i'm creating a variable and the value of that variable is zero and we have for each and inside that for each we have a tri scope and in that tri scope what what we are doing is we are creating a variable calling it the same variable name as this one so here's a variable name initial with initial value of zero is var1 then here var1 we are updating it as uh, var1 the new var1 is the existing var1 or the old var1 plus the payload element since for it we will take each element of the payload one by one it is going to update uh, var1 as the previous value plus the the the, the component of the payload and when it faces an error, when it, when it encounters the letters, it is going to throw an error, and that error, then after that, the error will be thrown to this scope, on error continue, and on error continue resolves it, so the output from on error continue will be green. So for that reason, then for each, for each is going to iterate to the next element in the array, and it does that until the end, then at the end, it returns as the, the final value of the variable is the sum of all the numbers. So let's add, uh, add breakpoints here and see what's happening. From Postman, I can send a request. As you can see, I have these numbers followed by these letters and numbers. Send the request, come to Endpoint Studio. Our original payload is here and our the initial value of the variable is zero here as you can see when i click next it will go to the for each scope and iterate one by one now the first uh, <clears throat> the first element of the payload is 10 so it is going to add 10 to var1 and var1 will be zero plus 10 which is 10. so if i go click next if you come here uh, oh yeah let me click next again so now if you see here bar one is 10 and the payload the payload is still 10 because it is still on the first element of the the original collection so I click next now it comes back again uh, i have a payload of 20 so the variable will be updated as 10 plus 20 which will be 30 at the end it should be 30. so now if you see our uh, variable is 30, the sum of 10 and 20. The third element of the payload is 30, so now var will be updated, var1 will be updated to 30 plus 30, which is 60. So if I do this, now if you come, you see it is 60. And we have a payload of 14, so now var1 will be updated to 100. We have a payload of 50 again, so it will be 150. Bar one is 150. Now it encounters a payload. The payload is string A, so it will fail and it will not go to this logger. It will not go to this logger. Rather, it will go to the logger and the error continue after it tries to update the the, the variable here in the platform message. So click next. You see an error. Since there is error, it will go. It will go to the error handling scope. Then it gets resolved there. If I click next, now the error is gone. Then it brings the next component of the payload, which is B, and the same thing will happen. Next we have C, the same thing will happen. It will get resolved, it will not add it to var1, obviously. And last uh, string we have is D. So here also, so it's an error. It says you cannot add string to the variable. And then it will get resolved on the on error continue scope. Next, we have a payload of 100. Now var1 will be updated to var1 plus payload. 
So the new value of bar one will be 100 plus 150 has become 150. And the last element of the payload is 200. So final value of bar one will be 260 plus 200, which will be 450. So now, since it has iterated over all the elements of the payload, if we see once it exits the for each scope, we know after the for each, uh, the payload is the payload we have before the for each, but the variable is the final variable from the for each scope. So the variable has been updated, we see 450. So here in this transform message, we can return the value of the variable, variable one in this case, which we access using vars dot variable name. So that is the sum of the numbers. So when I click next, it will return this result postman. So if I come here, you see the sum of the numbers is 450. The second approach is I have another flow here. So I'm not using error handling here. Rather, I'm using a for each scope, var1 equals to zero. In the for each scope, uh, I have here, um, I'm using the is numeric function to check if the element is numeric. If it is numeric, so it will, this will give true. So if it is true, then uh, var1 will be, since this is uh, as a variable, as you can see, it is not, uh, I'm not creating a payload in this transform message, it is a variable. So var1 will be updated to payload plus the previous value of var1. Otherwise, if the element is not numeric, if this is not true, then var1 will remain unchanged. And this is numeric function, we, uh, I'm importing it from the strings module. It, you can import it like this. So let's send a request and see here, this one, it will not throw an error because if it is not, if it is not numeric, it is not going to try to add uh, that value to var1. So it will not throw an error message. Okay, so, so the path for that one, the path for this one is um, add to, let's send a request, send a request, I'm here. Original payload is here. The variable is zero, as you can see. Click next. Now payload, the first element of the payload is 10. Variable will be updated to 10 now, as you can see. And the next element of the payload is 20. Now our payload is 20 inside the for each. So the variable will be updated to 10 plus 20. So it will be 30. If you see here, we have 30. The payload now is 30, so variable will be updated to 60, 30 plus 30. And we have the payload now is 40, 40 plus 60, 100. Again, the payload is 50, so var1 will be updated to 150. Now the payload is A, so there will not be any modifications to var1, and it will not throw an error either. So if I do this, see var1 is the same and the payload is now B, A has been handled, B also the same thing, and then C, and then D. Now the payload is 100, so var1 will be updated to 100 plus 150, is 250. Last but not least, our payload is 200, so var1 will be updated to 200 plus 250. So at the end, it will return 450. So since it has iterated over all the elements of the uh, payload in the for each scope, now it will exit the uh, for each scope. And this transform message will return the final value of var1, which is uh, after, which, after I click uh, next, it will add 200 to 250. That will be the final value. As you see, 450 is the final value, and that is what we will get in Postman. So if you come here, you see the sum of the numbers is 450. So you can you can add numbers, only numbers in an array by skipping the uh, non-numeric values, either using uh, on error continuous scope with for each uh, and try scope, or you can use if else condition inside uh, inside for each scope. If you like this tutorial, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more such tutorials.